What do the pyramids in Egypt? Leonardo da Vinci's portrait of the Mona Lisa. Sunflowers, the snail, the pine cone, and your fingers all have in common. The answer to this question lies hidden in a series of numbers discovered by the Italian mathematician Leonardo Fibonacci. The characteristic of these numbers, known as the Fibonacci numbers, is that each one is the sum of the preceding two numbers. Fibonacci numbers have an interesting feature. When you divide one number in the series by the number before it, you obtain numbers very close to one another. In fact, this number is fixed after the 13th in the series and is known as the golden ratio. The examples of the golden ratio that you will be seeing in this film and that exist in our own bodies and in all living things in nature are just a few of the proofs that God has created all things with a measure. In one verse he reveals that. God has appointed a measure for all things. When conducting their research or setting out their products, artists, scientists, and designers take the human body, the proportions of which are set out according to the golden ratio, as their measure. Leonardo da Vinci and Le Corbusier used this ratio in their designs. The human body, proportioned according to the golden ratio, is also taken as the basis in the Neufert, one of the most important reference books of modern-day architects. The ideal proportional relations that are suggested as existing among various parts of the average human body and that approximately meet the golden ratio values can be set out in a general plan. The TS ratio in the table below is always equivalent to the golden ratio. T divided by S equals 1.618. However, it may not always be possible to use a ruler and find this ratio all over people's faces because it applies to the idealized human form on which scientists and artists agree. The first example of the golden ratio in the average human body is that when the distance between the navel and the foot is taken as one unit, the height of a human being is equivalent to 1.618. Some other golden proportions in the average human body are the distance between the fingertip and the elbow, the distance between the wrist and the elbow. The distance between the shoulder line and the top of the head. The distance between the navel and the top of the head. The distance between the shoulder line and the top of the head. The distance between the navel and knee. The distance between the knee and the end of the foot. Just turn your hand and look at your index finger. You will, in all likelihood, witness a golden proportion there. Our fingers have three sections. The proportion of the first two sections to the full length of the finger gives the golden ratio. This does not, of course, apply to the thumb with its two joints. You can also see that the proportion of the middle finger to the little finger is also a golden ratio. You have two hands, and the fingers on them consist of three sections.
There are five fingers on each hand, and only eight of these are articulated according to the golden number. Two, three, five, and eight fit the Fibonacci numbers. There are several golden ratios in the human face. For example, the total width of the two front teeth in the upper jaw over their height gives a golden ratio. The width of the first tooth from the center to the second tooth also yields a golden ratio. These are the ideal proportions that a dentist may consider. Some other golden ratios in the human face are the length of face over the width of face. The distance between the lips and where the eyebrows meet over the length of nose. The length of face over the distance between tip of jaw and where the eyebrows meet. The length of mouth over the width of nose. The width of nose over the distance between nostrils. The distance between pupils over the distance between eyebrows. In a study carried out between 1985 and 1987, the American physicist Bruce West and professor of medicine Ari Goldberger revealed the existence of the golden ratio in the structure of the lung. One feature of the network of the bronchi that constitutes the lung is that it is asymmetric. For example, the windpipe divides into two main bronchi, one long on the left and the other short on the right. This asymmetrical division continues into the subsequent subdivisions of the bronchi. It was determined that in all these divisions, the proportion of the short bronchus to the long was always 1 over 1.618. All this information once again shows the superior nature of our Lord's creation. In verses of the Quran, it is revealed that God created man within a proportion. He who created you and formed you and proportioned you and assembled you in whatever way he willed. A rectangle, the proportion of whose sides is equal to the golden ratio, is known as a golden rectangle. Let us now examine the features of this golden rectangle.